I think perhaps the best way in which I could illustrate uh, the meaning of the hunter, the essence of this man, of this Esau man, symbolically to us in his full two-dimensional meaning, is perhaps to tell you a story about it. And according to this story, <clears throat> there was a man who lived, a hunter who lived in a community <clears throat> on the edge of a very great forest in the heart of Africa. And one day, when he was out hunting, a rather desperate moment when his people wanted food and they depended upon him. He was very capable, he was very good looking, and he was very popular and a very much beloved person. And he didn't find anything and it got hot. It was noon. The sun was very hot. I don't know if you're aware that at noon, at this hour, this strange hour in Africa, which always reminds me of the Chinese proverb that at noon, midnight is born. The ghosts begin to walk in Africa. The ghosts do not walk. These other intimations of life do not appear at night. Night is a happy, bright occasion of laughter and song and dance and people at their ease with one another. But these strange intimations and stirrings happen between sort of noon and about when the day turns over towards night. And at this very, very strange hour, he broke off because he knew there was a pool of water nearby. And he went to this pool of water and he bent over the pool of water. It was very deep, it was very still. <coughs> there was not a movement of air. It was like glass. And as he bent over it to scoop up some water, he saw the most dazzling and beautiful reflection of a great white bird in this pool. And he looked up, but the bird had gone. But the reflection, just this reflection of the bird, not the bird itself, made such an immense impression on him that he broke off his hunting and he went back to his people. And from that day on, they say, he was a profoundly changed human being. He lost an interest in hunting. He lost an interest in the community. He just wandered about and was moody and silent and sad. And then one day he said to them, I have to go. I have to find this bird whose reflection I saw in the pool. They did everything they could to persuade him. But he said, no, he had to go. And the story says he went wandering through the dark woods and the jungles and the plains of Africa. And he would ask everywhere where he met people and say to them, have you seen this bird? And they said, no, we've not seen it, but we know about it. He would see, come at a village and they say, would say, oh, what a pity you weren't here last night because the bird roosted nearby. And so he went on from place to place, place to place, until when he was rather an old man and his strength was going from him, he came to a very great mountain. What was always interesting to me about the story was they said it was a mountain where the earth shook. Well, there are mountains like that. There are volcanoes in the center of Africa. There are places like that. But we were at least 3,000 miles away from it, and yet there was this image of a mountain which was where the earth shook. And the hunter saw people who lived, the people of the mountain, and asked them about the bird. And they said, yes, we know about the bird, the bird roosts on the summit of this mountain. And he started climbing then with great difficulty. He climbed and climbed. 
until at last, late one afternoon, he came to a foot of the cliff, and the cliff was sheer, and he couldn't climb anymore. He knew he'd never get up that cliff. He couldn't climb to the top. And he was heartbroken and said, now I shall never find the bird whose image, whose reflection I saw. And then, very sadly, he lay down and thought, well, I might as well die here. And he laid himself down to die. And as he did so, a voice inside said, said, him, said to him, look up. And in this, this dying man, in the dying light, this very strange mythological light of an African sunset, he saw from high up there was a white feather coming down, floating down to him. And he held out his hand and he clasped the feather and the story says he died content. One feather of this bird at the end of a long life of seeking was enough. And I asked, I asked the um, a woman who told me the story, I asked her, I said, what was this bird then? What was this white bird? And she said to me, the bird has many names, but we think it was the bird of truth. So here, perhaps, you have the other aspect of the hunter. And when the hunting for food is over, another sort of hunter mechanism takes over, which is the seeking for truth. For the truth of which, at the end of the journey, one feather is enough to make the life complete. And I always thought, when I, of this story of the feather, um, when I came to read other stories of Africa and mythology, of the Egyptian uh, belief in ancient Egypt, the belief that the soul, in passing from life into death, was weighed in a balance, the soul on one side and the white feather on the other. And if they balanced, the soul passed on, the body passed on and into another life in the world beyond. Now that, to me, is the essence of this first man, unaided, uneducated, out of his own nature. This story shows that he, 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 when he, when he had the moments, his imagination, his spirit already had this search, this life, this search for meaning, this search of truth as absolutely fundamental and basic in it. And which I find is a story from which I've drawn comfort all my life, and it's a story from which he derived his meaning and which is basic, absolutely basic, to the uh, <coughs> spirit of the first man, to our own first spirit that we have in ourselves. Because though the primitive man may have vanished from the earth, this primitive spirit, this primal spirit, lives in us as well. Now, we will move on. This, I hope you will take as our sort of compass, and I hope that in what is to come, you can judge and you can measure the stories that are to come, that I want to tell you, you can, you can measure against the story which I've told you now.